What's up guys, today I'm going to talk about something that I'm super passionate about which is astrophotography and more importantly I'm going to talk about the one tool that I think every astrophotographer needs if you really want to take it seriously. Now here's the deal, we need to talk a little bit about what the problems are associated with astrophotography before we talk about the tool we need to fix it. And I would say that of all the things in the world of astrophotography, the number one thing that we need to fix or that we battle as astrophotographers is noise. Noise is the enemy, noise is always there. And the problem with noise is when you increase your ISO, you're actually increasing your noise. And having more noise makes images look rough, they just don't look good, they look unprofessional. So we need to battle that noise. The number one cause of noise with astrophotography is a higher ISO. And the reason we have to raise our ISO when we're doing astro is because it's so dark, right? Clearly it's nighttime. So how can we fix that? Well, aperture is one option, right? And I think most of us, if you're an environmental astrophotographer and you're shooting wide field shots of the Milky Way and foreground say you're in Arches National Park, you got that beautiful shot of the arch with the Milky Way behind it, you're gonna be shooting your lens wide open. You're gonna be at f1.4 or f2.8, however big that aperture can get, big that opening can get, that's what you're gonna be using. So we can't really eke more light out that way. We also have shutter speed, right? We can play with shutter speed, but here's the problem with shutter speed. As our shutter speed gets longer, our stars start to trail. We start to get star trails. And when we really talk about astrophotography, we're kind of not talking about star trails, we're more talking about star points. So I think another restriction that we have as astrophotographers is our shutter speed needs to stay fast enough. And if you want to learn more about the fastest shutter speed or the slowest shutter speed you can use to be successful, check out my video up in the corner, one of those corners, uh, to watch more on astrophotography in general. I did a talk a few months ago on kind of the basics of astrophotography. But in that you'll learn that there's a limit to how slow your shutter speed can go. If you go any longer than that, you'll get star trails and that's not what we're going for. So we're kind of stuck. We can't change our aperture, we can't change our shutter speed, and so thus our ISO must be really high and we have a lot of noise. But what you can add in as a tool is something called a tracker or a mount. And a tracker, what it's gonna do is it's gonna move with the sky throughout the night, throughout your exposures. So as you're shooting images, that tracker is tracking with the night sky and that allows you to use a much longer shutter speed. Now, mounts come in all shapes and sizes. You can build your own for like 25 bucks, they're awesome. It's called a barn door tracker. They work great. You can spend 300 bucks, you can spend $500, you can spend a thousand, you can spend 10,000. I mean, the sky really is the limit, but they all do the same thing. They're all just tracking with the night sky and keeping whatever star you're pointing at in the middle of the frame in the middle of your shot. And that's really awesome. What that lets you do, if you had a perfect mount, you could shoot with a shutter speed of two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes. And during the course of that shutter speed, the mount would keep the sky perfectly in the frame and you would have no trailing whatsoever. Now, it needs to be said that if you're an environmental astrophotographer and you're shooting an arch in Arches National Park with the Milky Way in the background, if you're using a five minute shutter speed on a mount, that mount is gonna be moving with respect to the sky. So the foreground will actually be blurry then. Then you'll have the opposite problem. So if you do environmental astrophotography, it needs to be kind of a composite situation where you shoot one set of images for the night sky and another set of images for the foreground and you bring them together in Photoshop. Totally doable, but that needs to be set. Now, what does this do for us? This two minute or four minute shutter speed, obviously what it does is it lets us shoot at a much lower ISO. We can use ISO 100, 200, 400 instead of 3200, 6400, one of those very, very high ISOs. And what that does is it gives us less noise. So I would say out of all the things, and I think most astrophotographers would say, that if you could buy one piece of gear to help improve your astrophotography, it would be some sort of tracker. Now, down in the description, I've linked a few trackers. I've linked some very inexpensive ones all the way up to some very, very nice trackers. If you wanna take astrophotography seriously, and it's something that you're considering really getting into, investing a little bit of money in a tracker or a mount before you invest money in lenses or cameras or any of that stuff, I would highly, highly recommend it. Don't spend thousands of dollars on a telescope, don't spend thousands of dollars on a camera. If you already have something that works, get yourself a tracker. Again, links are down in the description. Now, should also say, next week, next video, we're gonna talk about how to actually take a mount, set it up, get it aligned, work with it, and use it in the field. If you wanna stay up to date and you wanna get that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down in the corner or up in that corner uh, in order to get subscribed to our channel because we'll be talking about that next week. Moral of the story, long story short, buying a tracker lets you use a slower shutter speed, which lets you use a lower ISO, 
which gives you a much better final product. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. You disliked it, hit the dislike button. If you have a question, comment, concern, whatever it is, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, subscribe because we'll get that video to you next week talking about how to actually set up and use a mount. Also, special thanks to Canon. This camera right here was provided by Canon to record these videos. They're a longtime sponsor of the school. We love them. So thank you, Canon. You're awesome. You make great stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Woo! Booyah.